So what are the risks in digital flirting known as sexting? And why is there a need to reform the law in the UK when it is not a crime if you are a consenting adult? Oh, we'll get into it as the risks are worldwide. So I found some real life scenarios that will illustrate the types of risks I want you to be aware of as an adult. Then we'll discuss how the law works in the UK. And as this behavior is on the increase for young people under 18 years old, I will also introduce you to Megan's story. And if you are a parent or a professional, this story will help you to explain the dangers of sexting to them. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm Karen Cole from Legal Minded Friends. I am a lawyer in England and Wales, and I provide assistance to those who wish to represent themselves in court. No more crying over spilt milk. Take the control back now. So the definition of sexting is when you share intimate images, which is nude or semi-naked images. This would include videos or provocative, suggestive audio messages with another person. To understand one of the reasons for the UK reform, I have taken clips from a police interview where the girlfriend of a guy who reported his parents were missing and the police want information from her phone that will evidence their whereabouts so they want access to her phone let's watch and see and then we'll discuss how important it is that she will allow the police access and we will also discuss what the policy report in the uk had to say about this very concern people especially like mr and mrs holderson i'm sorry that's like different levels of fucked up okay like i'm sorry that i'm freaking out now but like no. okay. Like, mm -mm. like, no. So you had nothing to do with their disappearance? No. You don't think Chandler did? No. You think, what would the possibility be for us to take your cell phone and analyze it? We're trying to verify some things that Chandler's saying. Well, you have all the timestamps. Saying. Right? So, I mean, you have all the pictures. So we have a guy that could download it while you're here. Like, you wouldn't have to leave it with us. He can limit what he mm. looks at. I'm not going to lie. So I we, don't, we, don't have, we don't care about those. Okay. We don't. All we care about is the sex messages from you, Chandler, Snapchat history, any social media stuff. And we're really just looking for probably, what would you say, the first until... The first until today. First until the first until today. July first until today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Locations and what she said. But yeah, if there's any like inappropriate photos, I totally don't care about those. I just care someone sees my photo. Nope. No, we're not gonna. We don't even want to look at it. They've been sent through text. They and snap. Uh, I don't want to look at it. So I don't think Andal's gonna look at it. He's going to just, so the way that he can do it, he'll just do it from a certain parameter. So July 1st or 2nd until today. First. Totally go just from that. Everything else, we don't go through all of your stuff. It's just a very specific time. And the only reason that we're doing it is just to make sure that we have all the timestamps, right? So you say that you and Chandler are together at this time, and you have the proof to back it up. That's really what we need it for. Can I get a... Pinky, you can't break pinky promises that it's only going to be from July 1st. So Yes. You, yeah. Okay. That's what you want. I would like a pinky on that. I can pinky you. Awesome. Do you have an email? Yes. What's your email? Oh, your birth. July 1st. Don't care about any buttholes, promise. I care about my butthole. I don't want to see it, so I promise we're not going to be trying to grab it. Yeah. Well, it was sent to pretty much Chandler, so. And I'm like, my phone helps. My phone helps, you know? Right. It does help because you take pictures of everything. Mm -hmm. So it totally helps. Verify mm -hmm. that. You can cover with your phone if you want. Like you can see my pajama pants. Sorry, I do my glasses. Okay. And you said you could see your sheets, though? Yeah. Um, and they have bumblebees or something? Yeah. You might see a little bit in the bowl, but you see in the corner how there's bumblebees. 
How about we won't look yeah, and you can right, just take okay. your hand off and let her see it. How about we won't look and you can just take your yeah, hand off and let her see it. Yeah, that's true. Is that okay? <laughs> So, so what'd you think of those clips? Uh, gosh, she was certainly embarrassed. And, but thank God she did show the police her phone because the police were able to evidence where the boyfriend was from the data on her phone. And they found parts of his parents in locations he was calling her from. And if you've not heard of this case, you can look it up on Law and Crime Network under the playlist Chandler Holderson, who was eventually convicted for brutally murdering, then chopping up his parents. And if it couldn't get any worse, they found his parents' skull, bur skulls burned in the fireplace of their family home. So how does it work in the UK? Well, the UK policy report that we've been hearing about recommending the reforms says that extracting of information from electronic devices was established in 2020 when the Court of Appeal, Judgment R versus Batter Dash James, set out when and how information belonging to an individual should be examined. The court recognizes the need to avoid undue invasion of an individual's privacy, which is necessary if the individual is to have confidence in the process while achieving the overriding aims of the criminal justice system. Hmm. Did you just catch what I just revealed there? Well, let's watch another clip um, that will give us a hint of just out of what was just revealed. Then I will discuss what happens in the UK courts. One, I would argue that that picture not be shown to the jury. No, it, Your Honor, I, I, it's got to be shown to the jury. Nothing I don't have a to. problem with not publishing it in the sense that it's going to be put up on the screen and displayed for everybody, but I would ask to be able to publish it to the jury privately. They can pass it around and uh, publish it that way. I'm also... Did you catch it? What they want to publish? The DA, which we call the prosecutor in the UK want to publish intimate photos. To give you a little background, this woman on the stand was accused and later convicted of killing an ex-boyfriend who she said harassed her for sex. We saw the prosecutor, or again, I should say the district attorney, because this is in America, requesting permission to use text and explicit photos to show the jury to prove that she in fact wanted him to perform certain sexual acts on her. Now, let's discuss what would happen in the UK. Okay, well, it pretty much would happen the same way in the UK. And it might surprise some people and shock some people to know, but explicit photos will be shown to the judge and jury if the prosecution feels it can prove their case. The other factor to be mindful of, if you think the image you sent is just, let's say, a bit racy, but not pornographic, well, it's not up to you or an expert witness you may try to hire to demonstrate whether or not the image was pornographic or said a different way, was only meant to arouse. This is a matter for the magistrates, court, or a jury assessing the image. Even if your intention being you the defendant was let's say it was just a practical joke well this too is irrelevant it is how the judge or jury would interpret the intimate image okay you might be thinking karen so what the girl in the first clip was a bit embarrassed and in the second clip it was her own doing they were all consenting adults well in both cases these girls lives were ruined and if you followed the chris watts case he was a father who brutally murdered his pregnant wife and threw his two young children into oil tanks. You might remember his lover was publicly shamed after their adulterous affair, affair was revealed through their intimate images and highly sexual affair. Everyone thought this drove him to killing his entire family so that he could be with her. Both of these girls ended up having to move from their homes. 
leave their jobs and loved ones and hide from public and media scrutiny. In the second clip I played, well, her behavior was risky, sharing intimate images, and this was enough evidence against her, as it revealed many lies that gave the jury enough doubt to find her guilty of killing her ex. She ended up being sentenced to prison for life. Another risk that can happen at any age is called revenge porn, and at UK Safer Internet, org.uk wrote a report in May 2022 and they found that the revenge porn hotline cases increased by over 40 percent which we will hear about in this next clip. If you don't know what revenge porn is it is when someone shares your intimate images to others or on social media without your consent and the new reform law will criminalize this behavior. We will hear Megan's story. I have highlighted parts, and if you want to watch the whole video, I have left a link in the description area to the Northumberland Police. So let's watch now, and then I will share what help there is available to victims, parents, and professionals, and the meaning of consent. My name is Rachel, and I'm a detective inspector with Northumbria Police. One of my teams deal with online sexual abuse and the harm that this sort of offending has on individuals and families. This video has been created so that you have the information to make decisions, especially as reports of child abuse online have risen 40% just this year. It's important for you to know the risks of sending private images of yourself and others and that you speak to an adult that you trust if someone is pressurising you to send them. I had friends before, so I wasn't quite sure what trust was. But yeah, after about two weeks, he started asking me to send photos that weren't just selfies, they were um, intimate photos of myself. Um, and at first I started to say no, because I didn't feel comfortable with that. It wasn't something that I wanted to do but I looked around me and I saw all my friends talking about it at school and how they were sending photos to boys, and so it was sort of normalised. As I said, my phone's always in my hand, the pressure was constant, he was texting me every single day asking for it, and it just sent a photo of myself with no clothes on, and it's something that, a photo that I wouldn't want my family or my friends to see. After sort of an hour, I got a Snapchat back from him and when I saw I had a Snapchat, I was like, oh yes, finally he's replied, maybe he's just been busy or maybe he opened it and his phone died. I didn't really know what was happening, but I was just happy to see that he had eventually replied to me. But when I opened it up, it turned out that it wasn't him, instead it was a face of a girl that was in my year group that I knew and it just sort of said, ha ha, I've got you. I just felt completely ashamed and embarrassed that someone who I didn't intend to see the photo had seen it. Um, so I thought the best thing to do would be to turn my phone off, to ignore her, ignore the social media world, turn it off and go to sleep and hope the problem went away. But that's not really what happens in the social media world. So the next day I got to school and I was absolutely dreading going in but my best friend sort of came and found me and said look this has happened, everybody's seen it, I've seen it, it's all around the school, um, everybody's got it on their phone, like what have you done and why have you done this and why didn't you sort of tell me last night. I just felt like everybody's eyes were on me, everybody was staring at me. I was just so paranoid that everybody was talking about me and I can remember just being in the school toilets, like crying my eyes out and my friend just dragging me by my hand to go see my tutor. There is help available. The NSPC hotline is for victims over 18 and for parents there is information for vulnerable and or under 18. The NSPC also has an online course for professionals, so you can respond effectively to incidents of nude image sharing. For example, when to get the police involved, how to support young people and their parents, and you'll also learn 
the why and the motivation behind this behavior so you can safeguard the young people involved. I think the course is only 25 pounds, so it's well worth taking. I've left a link below. The reform laws will protect victims in the event intimate images of you are taken, either by pressure or shared without your consent. And if you are under 18 years of age, you cannot legally take naked or semi-nude images of your private parts, nor can anyone else, even with your parents' consent, unless it is for good reasons, such as a medical x-ray at the hospital. And for over 18s, consent must be a two-way agreement to send or receive, even if you feel it is only flirting. If the other person has not consented, this is potentially a risky behavior that could land you in the police station. So before sharing an intimate image, ask yourself a few questions. Would you want anyone else to see or hear it? Would you be embarrassed if it went public? Is it against the law? Do you have consent to share? Are you willing to risk if the intimate image is of a person under 18? Because you can't be sure, and there's no guarantee, as 55% of intimate images are shared forward with someone else. Is it worth having to go on a sex register? These are all things you have to think about, especially with the new law reforms criminalizing this risky behavior. Hey, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe. Information is power. Remember, don't cry about spilt milk. If you need legal help, contact Legal Minded Friends.